Okay, in review now, uh, when I did the initial setup and run, I went as, uh, at a normal rate. But now I'm going to take the time to explain some of the various functions and parts of the machine. The first one is the control panel. Yours may or may not look identical to this, but it will be very similar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the machine on, puts the work head in position. Next button is I got to turn the wheel on, turn the coolant on, I can turn my cycle start on, and if you have a pace setter which puts the machine in automatic cycling, you can turn that on, or we have the automatic dresser that will automatically dress the machine. So that takes care of that. That's good. Okay, we're going to review the workhead and how to change the collet in the bushing. Basically, there's two workheads. There's the one with a small bore, which is uh, up to a half an inch. Then we have another workhead uh, with a larger bore, bigger bushings and collets that goes up to an inch. But to change it is very simple. Take a snap ring plier, remo remove the snap ring, take a little screwdriver, and just kind of work it out a little bit. It'll come right out. And in the back, in the back of the workhead, there is a bushing. And all I have to do is take a screwdriver and turn it up so that the slot is at 12 o'clock. And I'm going to pull that bushing out and explain that to you. This slot here slides into a set screw that's mounted on the back of the workhead bore. So that's all there is to it. And to install it, I'm just going to put this one back in. I'm going to have that slot up at 12 o'clock, just run it in there, seat it. Oop, I didn't see it. There, I got it seated. And then I'm going to turn it all oh, about a quarter of a turn, and that'll take care of it. And then it's uh, the collet itself is a spring-loaded collet. It just fits in there. Take your snap ring and your plier and install it. And what this does, ah, what that does, it just holds the collet and the bushing in place. The next item that you need to know with pre uh, exactly is how to lock the workhead out of position to change locators. And we do that, there's a little device here, it's a little flipper, and it has a, 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 a protrusion on the back of it, and if I pull the workhead forward, it will fall down into position and hold that workhead out of the way so that I can work on the back of the workhead. And to do that, it's very simple. If I want to change the locator, all I do, open the cabinet. See, now when I open the lid, my workhead is not falling back into the, the machine because I have this workhead locked out. Now, the locator itself is a, is a device that is used to time the drills. And there are basically two sizes of them. And for demonstration purposes, all I have to do, if I needed uh, the small one for, say, uh, anything under 3 eighths of an inch, turn the set screw back, take a little screwdriver, and just pry it out, and then put the other one back in. It just comes right out. And if you want to put the other one in, just push it back in. And tighten the set screw and we're done. Now, we close, when we close the cover, we want to automatically, every time we close the cover, we want to pull that workhead forward and turn that. Okay, over here, we have the variable lift and feed mechanism. Now, this is a, a very handy device because we have master cams a master rise cam on the left and a master uh, feed cam on the right. And I can take anywhere from zero to 100% of the use of the cam on either device. On the uh, 3 8 inch drill that we did, we needed a setting of 30, and it's just very simple. We just ran it on 30, and it was coincidental 
that the uh, rise cam was also set on 30. If you do not have such a device, you will probably have a half a dozen sets of cams, uh, lift cams and rise cams, and then you will know which ones. The next uh, device that you need to understand is the locator dial and how to use it and what it does. This dial is attached to the locator that's uh, behind the workhead. And to use it, you simply push it in and turn it to your desired setting, anywhere from zero uh, to uh, 90. But what it does is it changes the chisel angle ground on the uh, end of the drill. The very useful. The next setting that we have is the in-feed selector. And what it does, it actually is calibrated from one all the way to six. What this device does, I usually have it set on six. What it does is it determines the amount of stock that is gonna be removed from the end of the drill when you're grinding. This dial here is a workhead rotation, how fast the machine actually cycles. Uh, that's, the, to use it, basically you gotta go fast enough so that you produce and fast enough and slow enough so you don't burn the drill. This is probably the most, one of the most important uh, controls on the machine. It's called infeed rate. When it is turned fully clockwise, it prevents the machine from actually grinding drills. So when I, I used it before in the initial setup and run, I turned it off, then I came up to the uh, wheel advance, or what brings the stone in or pushes it out. Initially, I backed the wheel away from the drill point. Then I turned the machine on, and I would bring the wheel or advance the wheel into the drill point until I could just hear it grinding a little bit. Then I would go back down to the infeed rate, and I would open it approximately a quarter of a turn or so. And what this does, what it actually does, is it determines how fast the drill is going to be fed into the wheel. If, if, the, if I feed the drill into the wheel too fast, I will burn the drill and ruin the dress that's on the stone. So it's, a, it's kind of a, normally, on a drill up to, up to about uh, three-eighths of an inch, I will use this, open it enough so that I feed my drill into the stone in about two cycles or two revolutions of the workhead. Anything over three-eighths of an inch, I will open it a little less so that it takes about four cycles to feed into the wheel then my spark out counter takes over for about four revolutions to put the finish on the drill. The other thing that we have is the grind position. All it is is a micrometer dial from zero to uh, 500 thousandths of an inch. And what it does is it determines the uh, center of the drill relative to the dressed surface of the wheel. And then the manual always, in the manual that always tells you where to set it. And like I said, it's just a micrometer. If the book says 400, you just set it to 400 or 300 or whatever it is. Okay, now, in our initial setup and run, uh, I referred to the uh, clearance angle of the drill, which is one of the geometries that I need to have, and generally it comes out from the setting in the book. But the first angle that I'm looking for is the clearance angle, or the slope, slope of the grind rel relative to horizontal. And you can see this drill, it's going downhill, and particularly at the point of here and here, you can see, it's difficult on this tape, but you can see that there is a very good angle there. Okay. 
The next thing we want to do is we want to look at the finish of the drill. We don't want any burn marks. We don't want any striated, rough-looking grinds. We want something that looks smooth and pretty. The drill that we just ground was the 3 8 inch drill, and you can see the real shiny uh, surface to it, sharp cutting edges. The next, okay, and then the third thing that we want to look at is the chisel angle formed by the cutter and the center of the drill. And we want an angle of approximately 125 to 132 degrees on a 118 degree in included angle standard drill. And I have it. If I were to take a, an instrument and go down this face here of the cutter and then straight across the center or the chisel point of the drill, I would have my geometries. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you even on this small drill that we did. Now there you can see reasonably close that I have about 180. Or to change the chisel angle on a drill, all I need to do is either advance or retard the locator dial setting. If I advance it, I increase the chisel angle. If I uh, turn, it, turn it in the other way, I will reduce the angle. And to change, the clearance angle on the drill, or the angle formed there that you can see, uh, all you have to do is if you want more clearance, increase the setting on the feed dial on the side of the machine, or change cams, and that's it. One last thing is the, fin the finish that's put on the drill, or how pretty it looks. If the drill is burned or brownish or blackish looking, uh, chances are that the coolant is not directed exactly at the point at which the drill is hitting the wheel. So you have to check that out. Or your workhead is rotating too slowly. You have to get to speed up the rotation of the workhead with the workhead dial. And uh, the other possibility is, is the coolant itself is uh, wore out. I mean, it's just full of stuff and it's not working. And then the other possibility is that you are feeding the drill into the wheel too fast. And you can reduce how fast you do that by turning the infeed rate selector clockwise a little bit.